Gabon Ancient Nuclear Reactor The idea of a nuclear fission reaction hadn't even been theorized until the early 20th century. Furthermore, the first successful controlled fission reaction occurred as late as 1942. Being such a recent and intricate development, scientists were in shock when, in 1976, they discovered an ancient nuclear reactor buried deep below the land of what today is the country of Gabon. The most incredible aspect of the unearthing was that the fission reaction that took place there was dated as far back as two billion years ago. Due to the volatile materials and the precise conditions needed for fission to occur, the scientific community firmly held that such a reaction had never happened on the face of the Earth until 1942. Physicists calculated that the odds of a nuclear event occurring naturally on Earth were near impossible. The natural reactor site had to possess an extremely high uranium volume, and the width of the mineral had to surpass the typical distance that neutrons travel. There also had to be an arbitrator material, able to decelerate the neutrons formed after the uranium reacted. The chances of such astonishingly precise circumstances occurring were so astronomical that many people began to make wild speculations to explain the evidence. Ancient extraterrestrial nuclear test sites and pre-human civilizations with exceptionally advanced technologies were among the prevalent theories thrown around at the time. However, further examinations determined that the specific zone in Gabon where the reaction had taken place had been even richer in uranium millions of years ago, so much so that uniquely thick slabs of the ore could have formed. Scientists also discovered trace amounts of other elements entrenched in the uranium, with a percentage resembling those found in waste material generated by nuclear power plants. Researchers concluded that even if it was highly improbable, the underground site had been the center of an unprompted natural nuclear fission reaction sometime millions of years ago. Many skeptics still cling to the idea that the reaction had to be caused by a long-lost intelligent life form, even when the science community has determined otherwise. Zhang Heng Seismograph The official birth of seismograph technology happened in 1856, when the Italian physicist and meteorologist Luigi Palmieri built a device that could capture in detail the time when an earthquake had taken place. This innovative technology allowed the creation of advanced warning systems that have saved countless lives across many decades. It all changed when the accounts and designs of a 2,000-year-old Chinese seismograph came into the public light, and the experts could not ignore the numerous historical records and reports describing the ancient apparatus. The primary source of information was taken from the Book of the Later Han, a historical document recording the main events during the Han Dynasty in China. Inside this book, Chinese historians relate how Zhang Heng, a prodigious astronomer, mathematician, scientist, engineer, cartographer, and poet, invented a fascinating contraption that could map the direction of earthquakes. The design of the seismograph was described in great detail as a large bronze container, similar to an urn, with eight dragons protruding from its sides. Each dragon held a bronze sphere inside its mouth, which would be released into the open mouth of a toad statue at the bottom of the device. The toad that ended up catching the bronze ball would determine the direction in which an earthquake had occurred, even when such a tremor was imperceptible at the seismographic site. The description was astounding. An apparatus with the specified characteristics could actually work. Scientists were very impressed, mainly because they recognized that Zhang Heng, the mastermind behind the project, had no idea how seismic activity occurred. As far as the ancient engineer knew, earthquakes were caused by wind and weather precipitation. Modern scientists have made numerous replicas of the Zhang Heng seismograph throughout the years, not one of them functional. The issue it would turn out to be was that the precise internal mechanisms and materials of the olden seismograph were kept undisclosed. Hence, many experts soon categorized the story as an elaborate hoax. However, to the world's surprise, in 2005, a group of seismologists from the Chinese Academy of Sciences recreated a working replica of Zhang Heng's invention. By tweaking the inside pendulum mechanism, they proved that the device actually served as a magnificent seismograph. The Iron Pillar of Delhi Time consumes everything. 
This ancient mantra is especially true in the study of history, as experts race to preserve valuable things. Some materials disintegrate faster than others due to the onslaught of time and weather conditions, and ancient creations made from iron are particularly vulnerable to the passage of time, as rust breaks them down relatively quickly, leaving historians with limited evidence of iron-based constructions. Yet, shockingly, an ancient iron structure over 1,500 years old that has refused to rust still sits in Delhi. The 24-foot-tall, six-ton column has been a historical enigma for Indian and international researchers from the time they began studying it in 1912. The legendary column has stood all these years in the harsh outdoors, unprotected from the elements. But while many iron constructions of time have degraded into almost unrecognizable tarnished shadows of their former selves, the iron pillar stands intact. Even the delicate engravings bulging across its sides preserve a perfect shape and continue to be readable despite the passage of time. Researchers know for a fact that the pillar's primary material is iron. Still, the exact alloy that would allow an ancient civilization to produce a structure immune to rust has continuously eluded them. It would take metallurgy experts centuries to develop a modern understanding of how to create similar iron alloys using modern technology. However, in the 5th century, such technology didn't exist. Many researchers and authors who came into contact with the ancient metallurgy marvel turned to more exotic theories to explain the iron alloy. In 1969, author Eric von Däniken credited the lack of rust on the Delhi pillar and the mysterious nature of its creation as an indication of extraterrestrial interference. Similar to the pyramids at Giza, the Nazca Lines, and the ancient Mayan temples, the Delhi pillar has become a key piece of evidence for those advocating the idea of ancient cultures having contact with alien civilizations and their technology. Lately, however, more and more scientists claim to have unveiled the mysteries behind the pillar, arguing that the explanation behind the corrosion-resistant alloy lies in three main factors. First, the use of wrought iron, in contrast to cast iron, which is more susceptible to rust. Second, the iron was forged using a high amount of phosphorus, with the phosphorus layer acting as a protective barrier against rust. And third, oddly enough, is the unique outdoor conditions of the area, with the mostly dry weather contributing to reinforcing the pillar's anti-rust properties and transforming it into an unrustable wonder. Whether due to alien technology or groundbreaking phosphorus metal forging, the Pillar of Delhi was ages ahead of its time. The Great Glass Slab at Beit Sharim An exceptional archaeological site lies in northern Israel. The place holds the remains of a small town called Beit Sheirim. These ruins are fascinating not only because they house the largest underground Jewish burial site in the world, but also because in the 60s, several explorers uncovered a nine-ton slab of glass in the middle of the burial cave. The glass block has no resemblance to the frail and transparent appearance of what most people know as glass. In fact, the slab was thought to be a stone for many years with archaeologists going as far as claiming it was made out of granite. In 1963, researchers from the Corning Museum of Glass visited the place and suggested the slab might actually be glass. Workers in the site laughed at the inconceivable idea, but the researchers took a piece of it anyway and confirmed that the nine-ton gray lump was actually glass after experimenting with it in a lab. The mystery suddenly grew. There was no apparent reason to have a colossal piece of glass in the middle of a Jewish necropolis. Notably, it made no sense to store a defective piece of glass in a place as holy as Beit Sharim. The glass slab looked like stone instead of clear glass because it was improperly made or eventually contaminated. Clear glass should have an 8% concentration of lime, and the great glass slab at Beit Sharim had 16%. The faulty composition gave it its rock-like appearance. Two significant theories have attempted to explain the mystery. The most conventional hypothesis holds that the holy cave was once converted into a glass workshop, as workers tried to melt raw glass to use in traditional glass creations. Unfortunately, the heat began to melt the limestone in the cave's roof, and the melted limestone dropped into the glass, polluting it and rendering it useless. As soon as the process began, the cave's days as a glass factory ended. The theory has some flaws, though. It would be implausible for someone to try or be allowed to install a glass workshop inside the largest and most important burial site in all of Israel. There are over 130 sarcophagi and countless relics inside the cave, 
and the town's inhabitants considered it a sanctuary. Besides, no other indication of a glass workshop inside the cave has ever been found. The second theory proved more intriguing. Based on a Bible translation that describes the windows at the Second Temple of Jerusalem as being, quote, clear and seal, some historians believe the holy place actually had monumental glass panels on its windows. By the time of the temple's destruction in 70 AD, one of these windows might have survived the fire, but being a limestone temple, the glass could have been contaminated with additional lime, making it like a stone. Taking this sacred last piece of the holy temple into a sanctuary like Beit Shearim would not be a far-fetched idea, but we might never be sure of its purpose inside the necropolis cave. Baghdad Battery Electricity is a relatively recent discovery. For most of human history, phenomena like lightning, electric eels, and static electricity had been studied curiously but never truly understood. Until the early 17th century, scientists would begin to identify electricity and define its nature, but it would take decades to take that knowledge and turn it into a beneficial invention. The first modern battery was invented in 1800 by Alessandro Volta. It consisted of copper and zinc discs piled on top of each other, separated by a cloth layer soaked in brine. The revolutionary device was capable of storing electricity for later use. It is no surprise, then, that the world was blown away when, in 1937, ancient batteries were discovered near Baghdad. The rudimentary devices were dated to 150 BC and immediately made historians and researchers reconsider their entire conception of the ancient world. The ancient contraption was made of a ceramic pot, a tube of copper, and a rod of iron. Incredibly, its configuration wasn't that different from what Alessandro Volta would create centuries later, but history would have to be rewritten if it was discovered that ancient civilizations were able to use and store electricity. Speculations ran wild, as people considered ancient electrical illumination systems, such as electric shock torture devices, and even bizarre religious rituals. However, scientists would later determine that with a voltage of fewer than two volts, the Baghdad battery has held such a nominal charge of electricity that it would be technically useless. On top of that, there exists no evidence to support that the batteries had terminals or were actually connected to something. Many experts argue that their use was probably unrelated to electricity. And even if ancient people could harness the two volts inside, the most likely use would be as a religious party trick to shock people into belief. Still, no conjecture is entirely certain, and the possibility of ancient cultures mastering electricity cannot yet be discarded. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels for more exciting historically inspired stories. Also, let us know your thoughts in the comments and hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest content.